have six minutes, I guess, or six and a half or something like this. Do you have questions? Uh, this is what I do in my project is like the following. I don't use private fields, package-wide visibility, and then you can just inject it. Right. And, good pardon? Uh, you can uh, set them manually. Yeah, can you set them manually? And in my architecture, I have never, I try to avoid as many layers as possible. So every layer has certain responsibilities. So I get service, uh, service uh, facade layer, probably service layer, and then domain. So in worst case, I have two injections or something like this is not huge deal. So I say no, something like this in XML. Or if your architecture is um, even more formal or clean, you could use a reflection to inject that. Or use open EGB, pitchfork from Spring, or wait to EGB 3.1. So open EGB is able to inject everything you want. And there is a great, the committer of, of Geronimo put a comment on my blog, how to test EGBs, just follow the link. I forgot, this is one of the last posts. David Blevins or something like this. And uh, you, can, you can fire up in, 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 in setup method the whole EGB container. Yeah, great question. So there's, as I said, the only issue is, for instance, if you would like to test uh, interceptors and security, but this is no more a uni unit test, it's integration test. In this particular case, I would say, just uh, provide uh, integration tests. But you can do it as well with dynamic proxy, but it is, it is not pragmatic for my point of view. Other questions? Do you, for example, use mockups for the simulating the database? No, uh, the layer, if it's possible, I do it following. What I did, uh, um, uh, embedded derby, not embedded derby, uh, uh, derby with file system. No, um, embedded, yeah, embedded with file system. And uh, after every uh, test, I just deleted the directory. Or if I have some fixture, I just copied with and the directory to my unit test and perform the tests. With uh, Oracle, there is flashback, I guess. So you can re remove the data. Or I used in bigger projects virtual machines with application server and Oracle. And after the test, I killed the virtual machine and fired it up. This is the best possible solution and very parallel. So I could, you could fire, uh, fire out as many Oracles as you like to. I'm not sure about the licensing, but it worked well. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this one, and, uh, and I never mock because I would like to test whether the named queries are, you know, are processed properly. So this is not a puristic, agile approach, but I don't care. It's pragmatic, it works. Perfect. Other questions? We have about three minutes and 40 seconds, right? Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Questions? Other bias, how to do something, EGBs? Where, uh, where, where are you? Sorry. Ah, okay. Startup time, you mean booting a container? Yeah, starting from failure for development reasons. Because, you know, when you're developing... Ah, uh, okay, in the case the of... of uh, the whole deployment of the application, it was, uh, I guess, 200 entities, and, each of, and 30 facades, this was my last project. The whole, the whole deployment cycle, a redeployment, rebuild, everything was 15 seconds. And, and with Glassage V3 redeployment, deploy on save takes about 40 milliseconds. If you go to my blog, I just copy and paste the whole uh, uh, log file. <laughs> so you see, the, you see the performance. It's about 40 to 60 milliseconds. The problem is it works well, but if you do some, perform some refactoring or change some stuff, you have to, be, to do the full redeployment. But yeah, and to be honest, if you, I have some serious refactoring, I kill the server and reboot the server entirely because I don't believe you know in dynamic bundles and stuff like this. Uh, I have a question. So what kind of projects do you use? What kind of projects do you use? So um, the, the, the craziest project what I did was we, we built a pet client. Uh, okay, pet client is the wrong term. Rich internet application. <laughs> no, but it was a pet client. And uh, because we call it pet layer client, because we wanted to put the EJBs to the client layer, so we, we fire up the container inside the clips. And why we did this? Because I knew that the customer would probably wanted to have something like a server side services or, uh, I don't know, a JSF pay, uh, UI in the future. 
So we deploy the same EGB jar. We put it as an Eclipse plugin and on the server. And they were EGB. So this was the creative what I did. And the more general, everywhere where you need transactions in concurrency, in concurrent systems, EGB are just perfect. Yeah. And this is the simplest possible solution because if you don't have EGBs, you will have to do something like create your own factory or at least invoke new. So you have to write more code. I wrote the entire heating control of my house with EGBs because it was the fastest possible solution. <laughs> and there's not concurrent system. There's only the heating in me, you know? Yeah, on my wife from time to time, but uh, <laughs> mostly it, it, it works behind the scenes. From, from my perspective, no. From, but there, because the overhead is not that much, you know? Okay, if you are building real-time brokerage system with in, you know, memory for special kind of applications, then perhaps the three, three per, uh, three percent or ten percent are too much. But in general, business applications, what I spend my time, insurances, uh, I don't know, banks and, and uh, manufacturing and so forth, is just perfect. And and this, I, I just write less code, and this is what I like. So, thank you. This is for the question. Uh, other bias question opinion. Who use EGB three in projects? Who? And you are happy with them? Very happy. <laughs> <laughs> About me now? Sorry? My name is Bean, but okay. Uh, yes. Uh, Do you mean the Fasola? Ah, okay, what I, what I, hmm, the unit test and mocking. So in general application, there is only few classes with heavy business logic inside. Then I mock it entirely. And for CRUD, I, I misuse unit tests for integrational tests, I have to admit. So this was the, the question somewhere here. So I use the facade, and uh, they don't, do not mock out the entity manager, and I use some um, mocked, mock database, or dummy database, is what I use in my project. It is a question. I try and, I'm not a puristic guy who tries to fiddle, out, you know, to mock out everything, because in projects what I see, they are developers which building own dream world with mocks, and I get always the question, uh, the answer. It runs on my machine. It's like, yeah, who cares about your machine? It should run, you know, on that machine. It's like, no, 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 it's wrong. Everything is green, and this is a, a huge problem with mocks. If you have a mocking, you need continuous integrations with asserts in unit tests on the integration machine. So. No more? No questions? No questions? No questions? Do you have a question? No. <laughs> no? Dziękujemy serdecznie. Zapraszamy na chwileczkę przerwę, a właściwie możemy za, za pięć minut zacząć wykładem Nila Forda. Dziękuję.